So uh, one of my favorite demonstrations to ever give for Spotfire is a mashup of taking the data that's available from the New York City Open Data Project, specifically the 311 service requests from 2010 to present, and mash that up with a shapefile of New York City by zip code to show the idea of mashing up data from an in-memory table and an in-database table. So to do that, I've taken all of this data, I've downloaded it, which it's about 3.2 gig if you download the entire CSV file of it. I've loaded that into my database. And I'll go ahead and select the top thousand rows there. And I'll just do this as a count instead. Count. And execute. And you can see it came back with, it's about 7.83 million records. So it, it can represent a decent amount of data, especially on my little laptop. Um, so I'll minimize that. And I'll open up Spotfire. And then I'll take my shape file, which is uh, projected to Web Mercator, Web Mercator uh, WGS84. And I'll just drop that in. And there it is. There's just a, a simple shape file, um, easy enough. And we can recognize the, the shape of New York City. I'm going to add in another data table. And this time, it's going to be from my SQL Server. So I'll put in my credentials, select my database from that server. And then here's all the tables. And I'll just add that one and pick which columns that I want. I'm going to leave this one as external rather than bringing it into memory. And I'm actually going to go ahead and manage the relations as well. So in this particular case, I know enough about these two data sets that in my shape file we have ZCTA, which is zip code tabulation area. And then in my data set on the, uh, for the 311 data, we have incident zip code. So we're just going to create a join there, even though one's in memory and one's in database, we can kind of just create a join on the fly for Spotfire. So we press OK. And then we'll go immediately up to the data table properties. And I like to make the 311 data my default data set. And I also add in a column match, which allows me to add this data, these data sets um, separately into the exact same visualization. So incident zip to ZCTA one more time. All right, so now we've got the relations and the column matches all set. And so if I were to create a new page and just do a quick bar chart, that'll give you the ability to see that this really is still working with that 7.8 um, million records but I can delete this, I can delete that other page. All right, and I'll just right click on this and go to properties and then go to the properties of that shapefile layer. In fact, let's move this over, settings, and then we don't need this, there we go. All right, so you know what I really wanna do is kinda of create a heat map effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, the count of the unique key. Uh, I'm also going to say that uh, in terms of geocoding, we're going to geocode by zip code. All right. And we'll say that the more there are, the hotter it is. And we're going to maybe make it a black border with a weight of two. Eh, this zoomed out, maybe that looks better. <coughs> and then we'll put some labels on it. We'll label by the zip code, the first. Maybe that zoomed out, we also don't need it to be, um, don't need a label at that level. So we'll say no label for this point. And we'll, pre and we'll rename this zip codes zoomed out. All right, 
good. We'll go back into the, uh, the properties of the main map chart, and I'm actually going to add a duplicate of the selected layer. You can see which layer is selected. And this time, I'll say map of zip codes zoomed closer. And with this one, I'm going to add those labels. And I'm also going to make the appearance a little bit more transparent. And now I'm going to add that border weight of 2. And the important thing about this is that with my zoom visibility, I'm going to make it so that I only see the uh, the zoomed closer one when I'm at a certain height. Yeah, let's. There we go. Okay, here is. I see it then. All right, now if we get closer, we're starting to zoom in. I, that's still too high. Yeah, there we go. All right, I feel I, I like that. Um, I think the transparency could still be a little bit better on the second one. Zoom settings. Just a little bit more without losing too much of the, uh, the fact that we've got those dark reds. Good. And then let's say that we wanted to actually um, get in much closer and eventually just kind of lose the coloring altogether. So then we would be able to duplicate again. And let's just say zip codes border only. And then the appearance on that one is completely transparent. And maybe in, some, in this case we want the labels. Um, we still want the labels, but with the fonts on that one, border only, we'll make those a little bit bigger. Go right back to that zoom visibility. And then when we get to a certain uh, zoom depth, we've gotten rid of the coloring. All right. So now that I've done this kind of environment, ah, I don't know that, that's, that those, those borders really help. So we're going to get rid of the zoom visibility there. We're going to bring this all the way back, layers, remove. Now I'm just going to use this same map. Let's make this the, uh, the clickable layer. There we go. Create details visualization of a bar chart. And I'm going to be able to say which, which particular table I want. And in this case, of course, I want my data for my database. I'll bring it over here, and we'll take a look at the agency name as a row count. Let's make it horizontal. And so now, well, let's so we zoom in a little bit. We're seeing which particular agencies got called from that particular zip code. So now all we have to do is you know stuff like this. Let's say we sort it by value. We'll color it out by agency name as well. Good. And we'll create a rule that says only show the top 20. Now oh, that's probably still too much. Let's just say that's going to be the top 10. Good. All right, so now we want to create another details visualization, this time of all of the different um, types of calls they're getting. So we'll create a details visualization, again, of a bar chart. And this time, we'll switch it out to complaint type.
right, so now if I click on any of the calls from any of these departments, I can see what types of complaints they're getting. And I could do that in any zip code that I have in New York City. Now, right now when I click on anything here, all of uh, like any one of my zip codes, all of my other zip codes kind of go dim in the background. I like the idea of instead actually seeing the color, so I'll just go to layers again. Let's bring the transparency down just a little bit, but more importantly use a separate color. There we go. And that's a lot better. So now we can actually see for any given zip code which one we've selected and then drill into exactly what types of complaints they get in that particular zip code. And note, all of this is running on about on almost 8 million records worth of data on my little laptop. So I hope this was useful. Uh, this is one of my favorite demonstrations to show, especially for the fact that we didn't do any coding in it. Uh, let me know what else you want to see. Thanks.